Hello and welcome back. Here we have the current version of my aluminium extrusion camera slider that I showed a while back. And we have gone from having an aluminium plate with small wheels to a plastic printed plate with large wheels, because the small wheels wouldn't engage the aluminium profile. The plastic printed part has standoffs so a top plate can be attached with screws. The timing belt is now attached directly to the first level plate with zip ties instead of being tied to each other. The second level plate will now directly contact the gear plate where we will attach a various gear like a cell phone attachment which we have here, which in turn can be used to take sliding time lapses. The top plate can be removed by simply unscrewing 8 screws that hold it in place because the only thing glued in place is the GoPro style holder. The reason for the modular approach is simply to do minimal printing when iterating and here we have some failures that I have accrued over time. Some of the bottom ones need to be done again because the wheels weren't contacting properly and needed to be adjusted. Even a millimeter's difference makes a huge deal when you're doing stuff with any precision. There were other mistakes too, like how in another the zip ties could not be properly tightened as the holes for the zip ties were too small. Another had the holes in correct size but no place for the zip ties to actually grip the timing belt. The middle square hole has also been removed as it no longer serves any purpose. It originally was the place to attach the gear plate. And then we have this one that I noticed that the holes for the zip ties were way too small and since they would not have fit the print was just cancelled 10% into the print. After that we have this top plate with the middle hole but no holes for the actual screws so I tested it with a small plate and the plate design was kept and additional holes were added for the bigger gear plate. The new top plate has 8 points of contact to the top plate to keep it nice and tight. Uh, this modularity allows me to iterate with single components and swap out only the ones that I need to change and that comes at just the cost of having to use M3 screws. I'm still using the old control electronics, an Arduino Uno and an Easy Drivers stepper driver. It still drives this thing but it ha still has no feed adjustment and it can only go in one direction. And we'll go and do that now. Here we can attach a phone to this clamp and then power on the device. I also originally used two of these extender arms, but having two of them caused the camera to shake to the point that the, the, the footage was unusable. So only one of them remains. I really do like these arms, and since they weren't made by me, I have provided a link in the description. And since we don't have end stops, we need to cut the power to this thing for it to stop. I also experimented making a slider that would have both the bottom and the top move so that the metal part would have to be half as long but it turns out that that is very unstable with the design that I made so I abandoned that idea but I may revisit it in the future. I want to make this slider turn in two axes up and down left and right and then also move sideways currently it only does sideways. But since I don't have the parts for it at the moment, it'll have to wait for later. First I'm going to make it turn left to right, then up from down, and then I'll be able to make it track a target so that it can go from one side 
to the other while at the same time keeping the target constantly in video. Since the new electronics that I'm going to use are actually meant for CNC machines, I'm going to have four axes that I can control and I might use the fourth axis to control the camera focus. So I'll have a sort of out of focus. Another thing that I want to do with this thing is to make it battery operable, as I can only currently power it through a wall wart through this barrel jack, which in turn means that I can only use this inside my house. But once it's battery operable, I'll be able to take it outside and take time lapses of sunsets and sundowns. Now I can show you how this thing comes apart and as the top plate is literally just attached by eight screws. And there we go, the top plate has been removed. We can now compare the old top plate and the new top plate, as I made it so that it's actually backwards compatible with the old one, so I can use the smaller one if I only want to attach like a GoPro, and that then will save again on the amount of stuff that I need to print, and the GoPro doesn't actually need 8 screws to stay in place. The top plate that I'm currently using is probably going to be replaced because it's actually too tall, and I have to take some stuff off the standoffs, so it'll grant some more stiffness and it'll be smaller. And there will be less plastic to print. But yeah, that's the project so far. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.